Welcome to part three, brothers and sisters. Let's try to finish this thing. We're going over uh, scriptural references against the sons of darkness and their punishments and their um, judgments. And we're left off right here, Ezekiel 27 and 6. Of the oaks of Bashan, have they made thine oars? The company of the Asherites have made thy benches of ivory. Brought out, <clears throat> brought out of the isles of Chittim. Daniel chapter 11 and 30. For the ships of Chittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. Habakkuk, for behold, I rouse the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nations. It's talking about the Kittim. Interpreted, this concerns the Kittim, who, who are quick and valiant in war, causing many to perish. All the world shall fall under the dominion of the Kittim and the wicked. They shall not believe in the laws of Yahweh. And we see that with the, um, with the Romans today, with their... Uh, Vatican and their Catholicism and all the Protestants that broke away with from her all the little whores that broke away do not believe in the laws of Yahweh neither do they follow them Habakkuk they are fearsome and terrible their justice and grandeur proceed from fear and dread all their evil plotting is done with intention, and they deal with all the nations in cunning and guile. Who does that sound like? Who deals with all the nations in cunning and guile? Y'all know where that is. Habakkuk. Their horses are swifter than leopards. <clears throat> And fleeter than evening wolves. Their horses step forward proudly and spread their wings. They fly from afar like an eagle avid to devour. All of them come for violence. The look on their faces is like the east wind. Wow. Interpreted, this concerns the Kittim or Romans, who is Japheth and Esau together, who trample the earth with their horses and beasts. They come from afar, from the islands of the sea, to devour all the people, like an eagle, which cannot be satisfied. And they address all the peoples with anger and wrath and fury and indignation. For it, for it is said, for it is as he said, the look on their faces is like the east wind. In other words, they have no look on it. They are merciless. Vanity. These people who have brought anger, wrath, and fury, and indignation around the world, colonizing everywhere, taking over everywhere, killing, stealing, destroying. There's only one group of nations of people that fit this. Just as the curses of Deuteronomy 28 fit one particular group of nations of people, the 12 tribes of Yashara are the twelve nations of Yashara. The 
the violators of the covenant, violators, Rasha, those who do wickedly, Second Samuel 22 and 20. 22, Daniel 11 and 32, 12 and 10, Mimzor, Mizmor, 11 and, I mean 1 and 1, Yisha, 11 and 4. Go look those up. The Temple Scroll, Behold, I will make a covenant. Take care not to make a covenant with the inhabitants of the country, so that when they whore after their deities, and sacrifice to them and invite you. You may not eat of their sacrifices and take their daughter for your sons. That means don't participate in uh, Thanksgiving while they sacrifice to their deities on that day. Don't participate in Christmas while they're sacrificing to their deities on that day. Don't participate in Easter while they sacrifice to their deity on that day. And there's different other days that they sacrifice to the deities, Halloween and Valentine's Day and all these other days. Let's roll on. Thanksgiving Psalms. I thank you, O Yahweh. You illumine my face by your covenant. I seek you. As sure as the dawn, you appear as perfect light. They have despised your covenant and their souls have loathed your truth. They have taken no delight in all your commandments and have chosen that which you hate. So you're seeing the sons of light versus the sons of darkness. These these are their characteristics, characteristics their traits. These are their fruits of their spirit. Grant me the place of your loving kindness which you have chosen from them that love you and keep your commandments that they may stand in your presence forever. Let no scourge come near him, lest he stagger aside from the laws of your covenant. Habakkuk 1 and 5 interpreted, This concerns those who were unfruitful together with the liar, and that they did not listen to the word received by the teacher of righteousness from the mouth of Yahweh. And it concerns the unfaithful of the new covenant, and that they have not believed in the covenant of Yahweh and have profaned his holy name. Habakkuk 1 and 5 And likewise, this saying is to be interpreted as concerning those who will be unfaithful at the end of days. They, the men of violence, and the breakers of the covenant, will not believe when they hear all that is to happen to the final generation from the priest in whose heart Yah was set understanding that he might interpret all the words of his servants the prophets through whom he foretold all that would happen to his people and his land and today you have many turning from these prophecies we are breaking down brothers and sisters and these final and the final generations are not hearing us as we're crying aloud, sparing not the violent men, the covenant breakers, the violators of the commandments are not listening, whom the most high has sent to bring understanding to his word. Psalms thirty seven and seven. Be silent before the Most High, and long for him, and be not beaten, beat it against the successful. The man who achieves his plans, it's interpreted, its interpretation concerns the liar, who has led astray many by his lying words, so that they choose frivolous things, and he not the interpretation, interpreter of knowledge, in order to... Relent from anger and abandon wrath. Okay, that's the continuation. Just want to make sure. Do not be angry. It tends only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off. Interpret it. This concerns all those who return to the law. To those who do not 
refuse to turn away from their evil. For all those who are stubborn and turning away from their iniquity shall be cut off. You have to turn away from your sins. Psalms 37, 12 through 13. The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. The Most High laughs at him for he sees that his day is coming. So the Most High going to be your vengeance against the wicked. Interpreted, this concerns the violent of the covenant who are in the house of Judah who have plotted to destroy those who practice the law. So you have those who are of Yehuda who is plotting against us who practice the law who are in the council of the community and Yah will not forsake them to their hands. This concerns, look at this, the wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. The most I laughs at him for he sees that his day is coming. Interpreted, this concerns the violent of the covenant who are in the house of Yehuda, who have plotted to destroy those who practice the law. And believe me, you, you have those pastors and preachers out there today who can't stand us, who are standing up plotting against us, brothers and sisters, who are in the council of the community, and Yahweh will not forsake them to their hands. So the Messiah is not going to forsake us to their hands, their wicked hands. The Damascus document, column 8, line 1 through 3. But the backsliders were handed over to the sword. That's what you're seeing today. Some of our Hebrew brothers and sisters getting killed out there. A lot of them not following the word. They may be of the Christian church, but they're not following the word. They are backsliders. And they are being handed over to the sword for destruction. There will be many of our people in these last days are being handed over to the sword for destruction. And such is the judgment of all who entered his covenant, who will not hold firmly to these statutes. You see that? The most are going to turn you over to the sword. Some cop going to kill you or some white heathen or your own people gonna slay you in the streets or break in your house or something you're gonna turn you over to the sword they will be visited unto destruction by the hand of Bay Leal the most I gonna cut Satan loose on you that will be the day when Yahweh will visit the arrogance of the princes of Judah Hallelujah. And Bailey Al been cut loose on us ever since, hasn't he? Through his people, whooping our heads, killing us with all manner of wicked destruction. Matthews eight eleven through 12 And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abram and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. So here's your Gentiles, brothers and sisters, right here. That's the many that's going to come with us. The grafted in of the other nations. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. These are the wicked of our people. The two-third. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So the Most High is saying here, some of you wicked Hebrews not going to make it in. And some of these Gentile, uh, Gentiles of righteousness going to make it in before you. Well, they're going to make it in where you're not going to make it in. So, you know, there's so much deception out here on these streets. But let's continue on. Ms. Moore, 83. 
1 through 2. The Psalms. A song from a psalm of Asaph, gathering. Keep not thou silent, O Yahweh. Hold not thou peace, and be not still, O Yahweh. For lo, thine enemies make a torment, and they that hate thee lifted up the head. They have taken crafts, crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Yahshua shall be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, still the Edomites, the Philistines and the inhabitants of Tyre, Edomites, Edomites, Ashur, as the Turks, the Medes, also is adjoined with them. They have hoped, or Russia, they have helped the children of Lot, Selah, The sons of Levi. Okay, now we're into the sons of light. The sons of Levi. The sons of Judah. And the sons of Benjamin. Those exiled to the wilderness shall fight against them with. Now they, there was missing pieces here. Against all their bands. So we don't know what they're going to be fighting with. They're going to have to find another copy of this scroll somewhere. When the exiles of the sons of light return from the wilderness of the peoples to camp in the wilderness of Jerusalem. So we're in the wilderness right now, the people. We're in this wilderness, scattered to the four corners of the earth. The sons of Levi, Judah, and Benjamin were scattered in every nation, whereas the northern kingdom mostly is scattered throughout um, Africa. Not to say that they didn't move somewhere from there and end up somewhere else, but most of them still there throughout the continent of Africa. But we have been scattered everywhere. Now this is the gathering where he's going to bring us into the wilderness of Jerusalem to purge us out. Go read Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 33 through 40. I think it goes up to 42. Anyway, Deuteronomy 27 and 12 says, These shall stand upon Mount Jerizim to bless the people. When you are come over Jordan, Simeon and Levi and Judah, and Iskar and Joseph and Benjamin. Ezra 1 and 5. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin, and the priest and the Levites with all them whose spirit Yahweh had raised to go up to build the house of Yahweh which is in Jerusalem. So it's showing you who the sons of light are. It's the twelve tribes. Sons of light. Psalms 19, 119 and 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119 and 130. The entrance of thy words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. Proverbs 6 and 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You see, without the instructions of the Mosai, you can't reproof, you can't follow the way of life, and you're not walking in the law of light. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So those who are not speaking according to the law and the testimonies, that's the Tanakh, the Torah, the prophets, the, the testimonies, that's the um, law. <coughs> That's the, uh, the word the Most High is talking about right here. All the word he's talking about. Kind of lost my train of thought there. Sons of light. Isaiah 51 and 4. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear 
unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. His law is for a light of the people, of his people, and anyone else who would take hold of the covenants and follow them and obey them. Isaiah 5, 20 through 21. Woe unto them who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them who are wise in their own eyes and prudent, prudent in their own sight. Hosea 6 and 5. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. Mishla, four, or Proverbs four eight through twenty two, but the path of the the just is like the shining light, that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness; they know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear and unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine ears, that thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Matthew 5 and 14. You are the light of the world. He's talking to the Yasharites, the twelve tribes. John 12 and 46. I am come a light into the world. And that's the Messiah. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5. You are all the children of light and children of the day. Twelve tribes. Talking to them again. The sons of light. John 11 and 10. But if a man walk in the right, in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. Acts 13 and 47. I have set thee to be a light the Gentiles. Acts 26 and 18, to turn them from darkness to light. And there's your mission, Zion, for all of you who hate and don't want to save no one else besides the twelve tribes. The Most High says, I have set you to be a light to the nations, to the other nations, to turn them from darkness to light. Now he could be also referring to the Hebrew Gentiles that were scattered into those lands as well to turn them from their darkness of following their Greek Hellenistic ways. So that can go both ways right there with this statement because Paul and, and um all the disciples with Paul and apostles with Paul went to the Gentiles of our people first in all those areas. But there were those of the other nations that did hear and cling to one who's called a Jew in those days and turned them from light to darkness. Okay, John 1 and 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light... So we have to walk after the light as he is in the light. First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you, for yourselves, know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night. For when... They shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail, of, travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. So we're going to know, brothers and sisters, we're not going to be deceived. We're going to know that time is right there upon us, upon them. But they're not going to know. 
and it's going to come upon them as soon as they scream. And we're, we finally achieved our peace and utopia with all their chips in their hands and their one world government and their one world system. All destruction going to break loose upon them. <laughs> upon them. The war scrolls. Who is like you, O Yahweh of Yashara, in heaven and on earth, that he can perform in accordance with your great works and your great strength? Who is like your people, Yashara, whom you have chosen for yourself from all the peoples of the lands? There's the separation again, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7, and um, Matthew's chapter 2 where Hamash, where it is said that Hamashek shall save his people and um, in Psalms it says we are the saints whom you have chosen where is chosen for yourself from all the peoples of the lands the people of the saints of the covenant learned in the statutes enlightened in understanding this goes hand in hand brothers this, this little portion here goes hand in hand with my video my other video where I explain Yahweh's salvation in the new covenant the wilderness of the peoples war scroll kings of the north Reorganiz reorganization of the temple worship and program for 40 years of war. Whoa. 12. Chiefs, leaders to serve. One for each tribe. Take up their stands for their festivals, for their new moons and for their Sabbaths, 50 years and older. All to be arranged during the year of release. Smita or Shita. They are not to war in the seventh year. The trumpets and banners. Silver trumpets. Mid ten and two. Alarm. Ambush. Pursuit. Gathering. Summoning. Enrollment. Men of renown. Fixed time to Yah. Withdraw. Of the banner which is at the head of the whole people they shall write. People of Yahweh. In the name of Yasharal and Aaron in the names of the twelve tribes, weapons, and movements. And the, I don't know what that symbol is, of the Nasi, of the whole Haida, they shall write the name of Yashara and Levi and Aaron and the names of the twelve tribes of Yashara according to their generations. Describes in detail the way they should march, how many in a line, and the precise design and material of the weapons seems to be Romans like. So we know where they get their formation with their secrets, you know, hidden all over the Vatican. Seven shows up quite frequently. Okay. Age of the soldiers in the camp. Column six to nine. Men of rule between forty and fifty. Hey, I'm 45. Who ordered the camps? 50 through 60. Ain't quite reached that age yet. Five more years. Officers between 40 and 50. Background work, 25 to 30. No blind, crippled, lame, permanent blemishes, uncleanliness. So you can go to war with if you got a bad knee or a bad back or wearing bifocals or glasses or something and I don't know what other blemishes um some type of birth defects or something, man, the shakes or something, you know. Because unholy angels I mean, listen to me. <laughs> because holy angels are with them. This is the reason the holiness of the Most High cannot. This is the reason why these can't serve in the temple. They can serve outside of the temple. You know, the, the main body of the temple. They can serve in all those other parts. 
but right there they they can't do the the sacrifices they they can't do the main service but they can do the other work the other things background work and it's because the holy angels are with them priest will be with them to continually blow the trumpets until they are blown have thrown to them seven times I'm guessing mean blown them seven times prayers and thanksgiving who is like you O Yahweh of Israel many references to the most high of the circuits and cir cycles of creation columns 2 1 through 5 through 6 the battle is yours and the strength is from you not ours neither our power nor the force of our hands have done worthily except by your power and with the vigor of your great worth so have you told us long ago saying a star shall rise from Yakov that's the son of the most high a scepter shall rise from Yasharal it shall smite the forehead of Moab and destroy all the sons of Seth thorns you will act against them, Baal and the seven nations of vanity, as against the Pharaoh and the officers of his chariots in the Red Sea. After the victory, the sons of light were returned and seen reigning. The hymn to Helia, or Psalms, of return, shove, Shaul shall burn in a fire. The battle against the Ketum. This is a time of tribulation for Yasharal, but destruction for all the wicked nations. So Jacob's trouble, huh? The king of Chittim, or the Edomites and Japheth together, and the army of Belial are all together now, all involving the blowing of trumpets. Michael is involved in this battle. Last column finishes with daughters of my people burst into a voice of jubilation deck yourselves with glory, glorious ornaments have dominion over the kingdoms to your camps and Israel shall reign forever so this is at the second coming in a final battle of Armageddon Gog and Magog major themes of the scroll Well, I guess it's the battle of Armageddon. It is clear that the difference between the sons of light and the sons of darkness is the difference between those who keep the covenant and those who do not. That's simple, huh? The sons of darkness are destroyed from among the sons of light. At the end, the location shifts from the at the end, the location shifts from the wilderness of the people. That means are scattering everywhere to the wilderness of Jerusalem, the wedding supper when the gathering takes place of the remnant and those who got caught up in air and changed come down with Hamashiach in the gathering of all the other remnant of the host in the flesh they're, they're going to be gathered for the wedding where there, sh there will be much jubilation and wedding like joy all twelve tribes seem to be reunited there is a comparison to the exodus talking about the second exodus sons of darkness seem to be a mingling of the east and the west coming together at the end of days so you are seeing you're going to see them come together and, and under one world government system that's the mingling and we're seeing the mingling happening especially throughout Africa. Ghana has already started its mingle with the West in South Africa and Kenya and Zambia is starting to mingle with the East and um, Kenya and South Africa and uh, other countries like Ethiopia. You know the last king of king from the line of King Solomon over there in Ethiopia 
which was King Halassi, something like that, from the bloodline of um, Solomon. Well, from that point forward, that kingdom belonged to the beast. <laughs> no joke. And so you're seeing the merging, the mingling. You're seeing North Korea and South Korea want to come together. And they're going to end up joining with China and Vietnam and the rest of them. You're going to see. We still got a lot left to happen, brothers and sisters. Y'all thinking 2019 going to be, y'all, you, you, day you go, you know, the year of freedom. Don't you believe it. I forgot what this means. Is this Exodus? Oh, Numbers. Numbers 24, 16 through 20. He have said, which heard, he have said, which heard the words of Yahweh and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the visions of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Yasharal, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheath. And Edom shall be a possession. See here. Also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob, Jacob, shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Emelik, he took up his parable and said, Emelik was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever 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 ever and that is the end brothers and sisters of the war scrolls of the sons of light versus the sons of darkness Tell me what you think, brothers and sisters, in the comment section below. And you can download this as well by just simply typing up War Scrolls PDF and add that to your collection. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom, brothers and sisters.